praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord good evening my dear sisters and brothers welcome to the wa the word of promise program we will be reflecting on 25th sunday of ordinary time uh, scriptures which the church has given us and 25th sunday of ordinary time sunday is actually the national catechetical sunday to take us into uh, the scriptures to explain to us what uh, the, the holy mother church has given us we do have reverend father ruan tharaka he is a lecturer at the national seminary ampitia kandy welcome father good evening to you good evening uh, father so before we go into the scriptures i would love to know what the theme is for this sunday yeah from the first reading onwards we see that god speaks about the importance of this aspect of suffering mm -hmm. in a life of a christian because a christian can't think about a christian way of life without suffering so mm -hmm. god explains to us why this suffering is so important in our lives okay. thank you so much father so my dear sisters and brothers suffering is part of our life and we are going to take it from the hands of the lord father will explain to us the importance of suffering and father now we we will only read the gospel today and shall we read the gospel father the reading is taken from the gospel of saint mark chapter 9 verse 30 to 37 Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee but he did not wish anyone to know about it he was teaching his disciples and telling them the son of man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him and 3 days after his death the son of man will rise but they did not understand the saying and they were afraid to question him They came to Capernaum and once inside the house he began to ask them what were you arguing about on the way but they remained silent They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest Then he sat down called the 12 and said to them if any one wishes to be first he shall be the last of all and the servant of all taking a child he placed it in their midst and putting his arms around it he said to them whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me and whoever receives me receives not me but the one who sent me the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ father the first reading today is from the book of wisdom and the book of wisdom very clearly speaks of uh, in uh, different uh, wordings <coughs> talking about jesus uh, can you please explain to us how to apply to our lives the um, life of jesus how to apply to our life yeah according to the book of wisdom everything was created by god in and through wisdom mm -hmm. now this wisdom is nothing but Jesus okay. Jesus is the wisdom through whom everything was created and today's first reading speaks about the suffering mm. as well as the persecution the just person has to undergo and we know that Jesus was just and he was innocent and he was righteous but he had to suffer yes he had to die on the cross even though he was innocent so being the creator so to say being the redeemer he had to undergo the suffering mm. so very clearly this first reading is also connected with uh, today's theme yeah. it shows that even though he was the mighty god through whom everything was created he himself had to suffer so the first reading says you will have to suffer when you try to become righteous because uh, wisdom is nothing but it is the ability to lead a righteous way of life mm -hmm. 
that is how we define uh, wisdom theologically okay so when you strive to be righteous you have to face persecution because those who are wicked those who are against righteousness they will definitely persecute you they will definitely harass you and you will have to face all sorts of problems but uh, with this uh, message that is given through the first reading we ask always to look at the wisdom mm. and to strive for wisdom in spite of the suffering and the persecutions that we have to face yes thank you father and also father if we have wisdom we will be able to face those um, persecutions and rejections in a in a very wise way obviously yeah. because we have wisdom right if if we have wisdom uh, yeah because we we see that even though those persecutions they come on our way we tend to see that they are not going to last forever mm -hmm. yes those who are wicked those who are against righteousness they will harass us they will persecute us but they will have dominion over us only within this world yeah but once we move from this world to the an another world the, the other world that is heaven they don't have any power over us over us yeah and while harassing while persecuting these righteous people they think that okay now they have become victorious yeah. the wicked people they think in that way but ultimately who become victorious the righteous people and that is what happened to jesus mm -hmm. no while jesus was hanging on the cross people were ridiculing saying you wanted to save others now save yourself but in fact he not only saved himself he saved the world mm -hmm. and he became victorious at the side of god so as you rightly said if you are wise you will face all the challenges you will undergo the persecution wisely yes otherwise father we will also get into their shoe like the ones who are fighting with us the ones who are insulting us we will also end up insulting them, them in return yeah. because here we see a kind of a conflict between value systems yes righteous people we being righteous people we have our own value system that is the value system that was given to us by god himself yeah. but the wicked people unjust people they have this secular value system yeah. when we see this conflict and when we see like they are thriving as you rightly mm -hmm. said we tend to embrace and welcome their secular system but true wisdom lies by being consistent in what you, what you have been doing the right thing right thing right yes. thing thank you so much father so my dear sisters and brothers when we are faced with challenges one thing that we need to ask from god is wisdom so that we can face that uh, challenge in a very wise way father go into the second reading we will not read it but then we, there is so much of like what we have in our context is written here we are jealous and selfish ambitions and this is the book of james like he goes on writing all these uh, things and these are not new to us what he has mentioned in the second reading so we see that in our families we see that in our workplaces in our communities everywhere uh, how could uh, we we have discussed uh, uh, how to face uh, challenges uh, now if we look at ourselves and our weakness here to accept our, like if i am jealous accept that i have jealousy yeah, how could that uh, if you can explain to us uh, the way that we can actually go into that kind of acceptance and from there to gain freedom how could we do that far yeah he also i see that this is also something to do with our value system mm -hmm. if i am a person who is uh, driven by my inclinations my sinful passions sinful desires there is always disorder but if i am a person who is moved by holy spirit yeah. if i am a person who is moved by the wisdom of god i will always bring order and harmony to this world 
just to provide you an example, before the original sin, there was a harmony between first man and first woman. That's why when the first woman was brought to, the, brought to Adam, he exclaimed, this is my own flesh, this is, bo this is my own born. So there was such a uh, harmony and peacefulness between man and woman. But after falling into original sin, after Adam and Eve were driven away by the sinful desires, they began to put fault in each other. Yes. Adam was telling you know, the good Lord, it is the woman who gave you, you know, the woman who, uh, whom you gave me, tempted me to do this sin. Blame God also. Or blame God also. So we see that they were losing that harmony, harmony. And it is same with, uh, the same thing happened uh, in relation to the coexistence mm. that existed between man and the world, yes. man and the earth. We know that first man was named as Adams since he was taken out of the soil, earth. Because the, in Hebrew we say for the soil, Adaman. Mm. So, first man is Adam. There was that coexistence. But after falling into original sin, they lost that coexistence. The earth was not supporting man. Man had to toil hard to cultivate this earth. So, we see that they lost this coexistence. So, what is the secret of maintaining harmony in the world, in the family as you asked me? in the parish community, mm. wherever you are. What is important is to stick to the right value system. And in fact, if you read the, the last part of today's uh, second reading, which is taken from the letter of James, Jesus says you ask things mm. from God, but you ask wrongly. Wrongly, yes. That's why your prayers are not heard. Yes. So if you have the... If you have the right value system and if you ask what is in accordance with God's will, God will provide you. Jesus, as we saw, he was righteous. Whenever he asked something, God did not refuse. Yes. If you read St. John's Gospel, before raising Lazarus from dead to life, Jesus looked up heaven and said, Father, you always listen to my prayer. You always listen to my prayers. I think I can't say like yes. that when I pray to God, Father, you always listen to me. I think even you can't say. Yes. Why? In, at certain moments, we tend to ask things which are not in accordance with God's will. That means that's a problem in our value system. Yes. We haven't uh, followed the right value system. So we must be driven by the wisdom of God if we are wise, we will be righteous and we will be stick and we will, be, we will become followers of God's value system. system. Then automatically there will be harmony, there will be order, there will be coexistence, no uh, struggles, no conflicts. And that is the secret of uh, slowly but surely eliminating the conflicts that are existing in each and every society, each and every community in our society. Yeah. Thank you so much, Father. You said a beautiful thing, Father. When we ask in Jesus' name, even like Jesus said in the scriptures, whatever you ask from the Father in my name, he will give yeah. you. But here it says, we ask for the wrong reasons. Yeah, because in Jesus' name, we ask wrong things. Yes. Selfish things. Selfish yes. things. So that means we haven't asked in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. How can I ask Jesus to punish uh, another person Sorry. in his name? Yes. How can I say, please Lord, do not allow him to get good marks for the upcoming uh, examination? Or do not allow him to flourish in his job? Can I ask such a thing from, in the name of Jesus? Yes. Sometimes we tend to ask. That's why our prayers are not heard. And also, Father, sometimes good things like we pray for somebody's healing or something in the name of Jesus we pray but uh, 
whether the question is whether we give the glory to God yeah. or we take the glory, glory because we have prayed. That the is a wrong, wrong intention. Exactly, yeah. And you very correctly said that uh, if we are in the Holy Spirit, we will also know how to actually ask in Jesus' name even to ask what, uh, uh, what we should actually ask. Yeah. Actually now, when we become wiser and wiser, when we strive for righteousness more and more, we begin to understand that we must not place a list of petitions before the Lord. That is a kind of a maturity, Christian maturity to which we should reach to. We begin to understand that God knows yeah. in and out of myself. So then we tend to understand that I must not tell the good Lord, this is what I know. He knows even before me what I really want and He will provide it to me at the proper time in the proper way. So that is a kind of a Christian maturity that I should strive for. When I strive for such a Christian maturity, then okay, I will accept everything from God's hands. God's hands yeah. Just look at uh, uh, Blessed Virgin Mary. You know? mm. She was moved by the Holy Spirit. Yes, she, she was so much docile to the Holy Spirit, to the movement of the Holy Spirit, that she did not ask anything. She just told, let it happen to me as you wish. So that should be my prayer. Yeah. Even when the disciples of Jesus asked, you no, know, when the disciples of Jesus asked him, teach us to pray. pray. Jesus said, when you pray, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So my prayer should be, thy will be done. Yes. Because actually, I do not know about myself. I do not know about the real and the essential things for my life. Sometimes I ask certain things by presuming that they are good for me. Actually, they are bad for bad me. Bad for me. But he knows this is what is good for him. This is what is bad for him. And certainly what is bad, he will never give us. He will even never if you ask in Jesus' name, yeah. even he will never give he us. He will never give yes. us, yes. We'll, when we come yes. to the gospel, gospel we, we, we will reflect about it because they were asking high positions. Yes. Even though it is not mentioned in today's gospel, we know the famous story, the mother of the sons of Sebed, you know, they were asking, uh, Master, when you come in glory, give us the either sides yes. to do two of my sons. But Jesus was saying, you don't know what you are asking yes. for. No? Sometimes we are asking certain things actually without knowing the real meaning of it, without knowing the real meaning of it. So let us pray and let us ask the Lord, Lord, you guide me. You guide me and as I told you earlier, my prayer should be, thy will be done. Thy will be done, that's all. Yeah. Thank you, Father. So my dear sisters and brothers, we'll remember the theme, importance of suffering in Christian way of life. That's the theme. And Father uh, touched a very important thing for us to face the suffering that we, will, we should be in the Holy Spirit and ask for the whole, uh, be in the Holy Spirit, be led by the Holy Spirit and say, Thy will be done. Father, having said that, let's go to the Gospel, Father. You can uh, further explain to us the theme and the reading today. Yeah, just to explain to you briefly the context of this uh, gospel passage, mm -hmm. the Jews, they did not know that suffering was a part of Messiah's mission. Okay. There were clear evidences in the Old Testament to prove that suffering is a part of the Messiah's mission, especially when we go to Deutero Isaiah, mm. starting from 40th chapter of Prophet Isaiah to 55th chapter, there we have the songs of suffering servant mm. of yes. Yahweh. Yeah. So there it is clearly portrayed that suffering is a part of uh, Messiah's mission. But the Jews, they just omitted mm -hmm. that part. Even we do sometimes, <laughs> part yeah. Christians also. <laughs> we tend to do because yeah. we know that it's, uh, it's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult, but Jesus says, even though you have omitted it, 
it is in the plan of God that suffering is a part of uh, Messiah's mission. mission. I will suffer. I will die. If I don't suffer, if I don't die, I won't be able to redeem you. Yes. I won't be enthroned and crowned as the Messiah. Mm. Because Jesus knew very well that his 12 disciples, they are going to continue this mission from where he has left. So if they are going to fight for the positions as they were doing on the way, they will not carry out this mission. As we discussed earlier in yeah. our parish communities, in our institutions, where we are working, this is the problem. Yes. We just omit certain aspects that, that are difficult for us, especially the suffering aspect. Yeah. We fight for positions. Mm -hmm. We fight for power. But God says, no, it should not be like that. You see, I being the son of God, who was sharing the same divinity of Father, emptied myself and became a slave. So follow my path, follow my model. Don't fight for the positions. So they were fighting for positions, but God says, no, it should be otherwise. Now suffering here, actually, we have to understand suffering is also connected with uh, rendering a service to others yes. by yeah. carrying out a selfless service to yeah. others. Jesus had to suffer by serving others. Yeah. Just think about, no, no need to go far away, just think about 12 disciples who were coming from different family backgrounds yeah. with different mentalities yeah. to serve them, yeah. to wash their feet and to teach them certain yeah. things. Yeah. So, if you have a capacity to serve others who are coming from different backgrounds, with different mentalities, who have different ambitions, mm. then you become powerful. Mm. Sometimes we think that, okay, I become powerful by gaining a position, by becoming popular mm. among others. But Jesus says, no. More you have capacity to serve others, more you become powerful. It's a suffering. Yeah. Not easy to serve others. Yes. Not easy to serve others. But we see that later on, after the ascension of Jesus, mm. the disciples understood this. Yes. That's why, instead of looking for higher positions, instead of craving for power, they went to the all corners of the world and they were preaching the good news and they rendered this selfless service because they knew that more we serve others, more we become powerful. So if I want to become powerful like Jesus, what I want to do is to serve others. Mm. As I said, to serve others, it's a suffering. Yeah. It's a suffering because I have to serve someone who is totally different from me. Yeah. And some people take advantage also, no Father, when we uh, support, we can selflessly take a step. I know a lot of people, they can selflessly, they will take a step uh, to serve other, other people. Yeah. But uh, when, this, when they see the goodness of these people, kindness of these people, there are a lot of others who will take advantage also. But uh, I think uh, to, with today's gospel and today's theme, uh, that is also part of uh, the part suffering. Of our, that is what uh, righteousness is all about. We have, I am also evil, I am <laughs> also a bad person, but others are also evil. Mm. So they will work according to the parameters and criteria of this world. Yeah. When they, as you rightly said, when they see that I am good, I am someone who come out of my way to help others, mm. sometimes they will manipulate the situation. Oh, yes. <laughs> they will try to gain the, ad, gain the advantage out of that. Mm. But what I want is to serve others. Yeah. If my intention is pure, mm. what I want to do is to follow the footsteps of the Lord, that's enough. Mm. Because ultimately what happens is everyone will have to give a private detailed account before the universal judge, yes. the Lord. Yes. So I must not be worried about the account that the other person is going to do. So I must not judge. Yes. 
judgment or judging is not part of a uh, Catholic. Yeah. Jesus did not judge anyone. Even while hanging on the cross, he forgave others, he did not judge anyone. Mm. So that is the kind of uh, capacity he had to serve others. Mm. And I, I would rather say it's a suffering. Yes. By knowing very well that these people are culpable and responsible for my death, for this innocent blood, he not, I, I won't say he ignores it, but he prays for their conversion. Mm. It's not easy. While you are living in your, in your family, you know that your wife, your husband or your children, they misuse your love. Mm -hmm. They misuse the freedom that you have given to them. But still, if you continue to love them without judging them, by hoping that something good will happen to them, yeah. it's a suffering, it's not easy. Yeah. That is righteousness. Mm -hmm. That is righteousness. Mm -hmm. So for that we should strive for. That's why I said suffering is a part of our Christian way of life. It not may be external suffering. Mm, yeah like that external suffering that was exerted upon Jesus or the disciples. We are suffering internally. internally. Yeah, internally. Many are suffering internally. Yeah, yeah. But those who know how to suffer, mm, yeah. there is an art of suffering, suffering also. Yes, yes. So they will become true Catholics. Yeah, yeah. True Catholics. Actually, like you very correctly said, Father, um, tolerance, patience, accepting the, uh, the scourging, accepting the slapping, uh, like taking that insult, misunderstandings, but yet we take it with, uh, from the hands of the Lord with a lot of patience and continue to pray for the person who is doing that. I think that is, uh, uh, the, there is a meaning then in the Christian suffering. suffering. That is the suffering father, actually not, is not outwardly. What exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can suffer like that, mm. as, as it is mentioned in the first reading as well in the second mm. reading. If you have your value system correctly. Correctly, yes. If you have the Catholic value system, you will suffer not, uh, not sadly. Yeah. Not uh, by, yeah, joyfully. Joyfully. Not, not in sorrow, but joyfully you will do that. So uh, just this small thing is coming to my mind. Uh, there was this particular priest who met with an accident and he was on crutches and he had gone to see the Holy Father, um, Pope uh, Saint John Paul II. So he went and said, Father, I'm suffering with this. He said, be happy. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your suffering. Pray for the souls in the purgatory. purgatory. Offer it. So I think that is also a beautiful way of accepting the suffering in life. Father, thank you so much, Father. I think we are coming to the end of the program. And my dear sisters and brothers, Christian life, the suffering in Christian life is very meaningful. And let's not fret about it, lament about it, but uh, take it into our lives from the hands of the Lord in the Holy Spirit. Father, I really want to thank you for actually imparting this and making it so practical to us, the suffering, how to take uh, suffering uh, uh, in, into our lives joyfully. Thank you so much, Father. May God bless, God bless you. you. My dear sisters and brothers, thank you so much for joining today. Please do join us again next week. God bless you.